Before we start solving practice problems, let's review some properties of matrices. Matrices involve various operations and concepts, which can be difficult to remember all at once. However, with repeated practice, we'll become more familiar with these concepts, making it easier to progress to more advanced topics in linear algebra. Therefore, it's important to remember how these concepts are applied in practice problems. Let's review some of the definitions in linear algebra. The determinant of a matrix represents its volume, or the change in volume that results from transformation. A matrix can resize or rotate the axis of a space. During this process, the volume determined by vectors in the matrix changes, and the determinant is defined as the ratio of this volume change. Although we did not discuss the traceable matrix in the previous lecture, it's important to address it now since it's crucial in linear algebra. For example, consider a matrix A with values 2, 1, 1, and 3. The trace of matrix A is the sum of its diagonal elements and it equals 5. Calculating the trace is straightforward, but it can become complicated when combined with operations involving the determinants or the transpose. Therefore, make sure you understand what the trace is. A diagonal matrix of matrix A is the matrix that has the same diagonal elements as A and zeros for all other elements. Thus, it only contains the diagonal components of the original matrix. Conversely, suppose we have a vector with elements 2 and 3. The diagonal matrix of this vector is a matrix where the diagonal elements are the elements of the vector and zeros for all other elements. A diagonal operator sometimes involves transferring a vector into a matrix or, in other cases, transferring a matrix into a vector leaving only the diagonal elements. It really depends on the context in which it is being used. Eigenvalues of a matrix are represented by the first three letters E, I, and G. Next, let's look at the vectorization of matrix A. Vectorization is different from transferring a matrix into a vector with a diagonal operator. I'll give you an example with a new matrix containing the values 1, 2, 0, and 3. The result of vectorizing the matrix is a vector with these values arranged in a column. In other words, through the process of vectorization, we reduce the dimensionality of a matrix to 1. The vectorized matrix is represented by the three letters V, E, and C. Let's skip the supremum of a set since it has less importance for this course. Matrix norm does not appear frequently in basic statistics. However, when you apply linear algebra in developing an algorithm or an AI model, it will appear very often. A matrix norm literally means the norm of a matrix. However, depending on which values are used as the subscript, the outcome can change significantly. The subscript can be 0, 1, or even f. But keep in mind that a general matrix norm without a subscript is the largest value in the matrix. For example, the matrix norm of a matrix containing 2, 0, 1, and 3 is 3, since 3 is the largest value. There are different types of norms, for example, some might return a vector comprising the largest value from each column. However, for this course, when we determine a matrix norm, it refers to the largest value in the matrix. As we discussed in the previous lecture, a transpose matrix is a matrix that is obtained by swapping the rows and columns of the original matrix. Thus, the transpose of a matrix 2, 3, 0, and 1 is a matrix 2, 0, 3, and 1. 
When we transpose a matrix that is not square, it will result in a matrix with a different shape. So the first matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix, while the second matrix is a 3 by 2 matrix. So in other words, the number of rows and columns are swapped. In some cases, you might encounter an inverse sign in front of T. A inverse T is the transpose of an inverse matrix of A. Additionally, transposing an inverse matrix is equivalent to inversing a transpose matrix, as described here. Thus, the order of operation does not affect the outcome. So far, we've reviewed some of the key operations involving matrices. In linear algebra, certain operations are represented by letters or symbols, so it's important to remember their representations. Now let's explore some important properties related to inverse and transpose. These properties appear very frequently, so try to memorize them. I believe you will become familiar with these properties after solving some practice problems. However, to solve the problems, you need to memorize them first. Let's take a closer look at them. We have a multiplication of two inverse matrices. Let's explore what it geometrically means to multiply two inverse matrices. First of all, what is AB? Suppose we have a vector x. The coordinates of vector x are first transformed by matrix B, and then by matrix A. Thus, B is the first matrix transforming x, and A is the second. Now what is the inverse of AB? The inverse of AB reverses the transformation applied by AB. The product of the inverse of AB and ABX is simply X, right? Let's denote the product of A and B as C. Then the inverse of AB is C inverse. The product of C inverse, C, and X is again simply X. C inverse reverse the transformation by C. To reverse the transformation by C, where C represents the product of A and B, we consider how X was initially transformed, first by B, and then by A. To reverse this process, we multiply by A inverse first, and then B inverse. Thus, the order is opposite compared to AB. Alternatively, we can think about it differently. Since A inverse A equals the identity matrix, we can rewrite the equation as B inverse I B X. Since the identity matrix does not affect the calculation, we can simplify it. This is how we can prove the first property. Let's look at the second property. Let's ignore the dots for now. In the multiplication of ABC inverse, ABC, and X, the order of transformation is C, B, and A. To reverse the transformation, we start from A this time. Thus, it goes like A inverse, B inverse, and lastly, C inverse. Again, to reverse the transformation, we multiply inverses in the order of A inverse, B inverse, and C inverse. The product of these two is an identity matrix. Therefore, the inverse of ABC is C inverse time B inverse time A inverse. To summarize, when determining the inverse of the product of matrices, we reverse their order. So finding the inverse is somewhat simple and intuitive. The next property is that the inverse of the transpose is the same as the transpose of the inverse. The transpose itself is also a type of transformation. Since this property is not intuitive, let's just memorize it for now. The next property also involves the transpose of matrices. Adding matrices first and then transposing, or transposing first and then adding, leads to the same outcome. 
Additionally, similar to the inverse, the order of matrices is swapped when transposing the product of two matrices. Our last property is also similar to the previous one. The transpose of the product of multiple matrices is equal to the product of the transpose matrices in reversed order. Although we have improved the last four properties, it's important to memorize them. The properties involving multiplication like this are especially important. So try to memorize them before we start solving practice problems.